The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. It's time to go on the mat. The Cedar Valley's longest running radio show devoted entirely to wrestling. Brought to you by Rolling Ford and the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum on 1650 The Fan. Welcome to On the Mat. This is Jeff Bradley. We've got our monthly UNI Wrestling PWC edition. Going to have a great show here. We're going to have just two guests. Max Thompson, 2017 All-American for University of Northern Iowa. Fifth place in the country. We'll talk to him about that and some other things. And then the last two sessions will be head coach Doug Schwab. He will talk about uh, some results we've had. Chattanooga, Tennessee, Hampton, Virginia. Some great upcoming meets and then kind of looking ahead towards the conference and the NCAAs. But we've got Max in the studio right now. Max Thompson is a red shirt, excuse me, red shirt sophomore. I was about ready to call you red shirt freshman. You don't want to, well, maybe you do want to go back to last year. I don't know. Last year's a good year. But um, you're in the house right now. Like I said, fifth in the country, all American, business major, 3.3 cumulative GPA. So I'm just going to say this. I mean, obviously you take studies as serious as you take wrestling, right? Mm-hmm. And how often do you – I mean, what are you doing a day study-wise? Are you putting in – is it like two hours a day? Is it three? Is it five some days, one one day? Um, I just say it depends on the workload. I know I just tried to uh, get to as many tutor sessions as I can and just try to stay prepared for all my classes. So what's the hardest class? Let's see, this would be your two, four, fifth. You're going to your sixth semester. What's the hardest class you've had so far? Um, definitely business statistics. That was really hard trying to do statistics without a calculator. I think it's kind of unreasonable. But So your business, is it something specific there? Is it finance? Is it anything like that? Econ? I'm not sure what it's going to be yet, but um, hopefully make a lot of money to get back to you and I wrestling. That's a good answer right there. Because I do a lot of finance and econ guys, and they ended up being public relations. I'm not saying you're going to do that. You don't want to do that if you don't have to. But that's uh, that's the route a lot of guys took. Uh, so let's say you do make a ton of money. What do you see yourself doing? You're done competing collegiately. Maybe you go on try to make some World Olympic teams. Now you're old and you're tired. You can't compete anymore. What's like your dream job You know, outside of wrestling? My dream job uh probably be own my own business. I don't don't know what it'd be, but just something that I'm doing um for myself and maybe not working under anybody else and um I'd like to make enough money to um really put into West Gym and maybe turn West well t- turn West Gym into the best wrestling facility in the world, even though I already think it's right up there. And you're gonna have to make a lot of money, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what West Gym has got I'm telling you, the best atmosphere, no doubt. Love it when it gets, you know, 85, 90 degrees in there, and you do too, you know, and just see your opponents melt. But, yeah, it could use some upgrades for sure. But what do you, I mean, what do you see? You're like, you're like a banker? You're, do you even envision anything like that yet, or are you just too focused on wrestling and getting through school? Um, right now I'm just going with the flow and going through wrestling and kind of going through my classes and maybe getting some ideas, but I'm definitely open to everything right now. So you were four-time state champ in high school. You were number 24. Um, you know, we did a little show last night, and I, I'm trying to get get it out of you again. Is there, like, some little secret handshake or club you guys go to, drink Kool-Aid and tell each other how great you are four-timers? Or Is there anything like that? Or I don't know, Juice. I can't yeah, discuss that with yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. The funny thing is I remember, and I don't remember the first guy, Bob Steenledge at all. I remember Jeff Kerber because I was young and right around that area when he won that. And then, obviously, uh, Mark Schwab. I remember watching him win his. And then all, all the ones in between, but that's pretty cool. The other thing I was going to ask you about that fourth one, I, know, I remember you were wearing that mask. Mm-hmm. And it just seemed to me, and I'm probably wrong, but it seemed like you never took that mask off. It seemed like you shook hands, it was on. On the, on the victory stand, it was on. When you were giving interviews, it was on. Is, that, is, is my recollection wrong there? Is that <laughs> no, the the mask was only on during the match, but I know my mom, she wasn't too happy that I didn't take it off because she wanted a picture without the mask, but um, I'm glad I kept it on because I th- thought it looked pretty cool. That's actually what I do remember. You know, I, was kinda, I knew you didn't have it on at the victory stand, but I do remember 
you're getting your hand raised, and of course couldn't even see who you were. You just saw your body, and then then the big like Jason ho- hockey mask, and or Hannibal. There's, there's yeah. Matt. Yeah, yeah. Put it on me so I don't bite you. So let's go back to just that senior year in high school, and I know all your high school coaches real well, Kurt, uh, of course Pat Hogan, Bart Maylert. Um, you know Hogan obviously wrestled at you and I, and tougher nails. I know you competed with those guys. How close did you get to really going even, Steven, with them? Or I don't, I can't believe you got the best of them. But did, did you on occasion get the best of those guys? Well, I know. Uh, I hope Coach Hogan's listening to this because I did hit him in a Jonesy once when I was a sophomore, so that was pretty cool. But um, Bart Mailer, he always whipped me around. Yeah, he's a he's a beast, and um, even my senior year, he kind of put it to me pretty hard. You know, that's the difference being, you know, a full-grown man and obviously went to Wartburg and All-American there. If he wasn't a national champ, I think he might have been. You know, and Hogan are a match away from being All-American Division One. Those guys were salty guys. Was there, was there a big jump from the practice you remember at LaPorte City to you and I? Or was it, was it kind of made the same? Obviously, the talent level is different. But was there a big jump like you go, oh, wow, this is Division One practice? Yeah, I think just the deepness of a Division One room and um, everybody's high level and everybody can compete with you. So if you wanted to get a real good workout, say it wasn't the, the coaches, was it Holschlag, another guy on our team right now? Yeah, every single day I'd wrestle uh, Jacob Holschlag and Trevor McLaughlin. Okay, that's a pretty good group of three right there. So I want to talk about your parents a little bit. I know they have traveled a ton. Like the like the team has, your folks Mark and Kim, they've traveled to Princeton, New Jersey, watch you wrestle in the All Star meet, Las Vegas, Ithaca, New York, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and now Hampton, Virginia. That is unbelievable. And you know maybe not. I mean Albers folks have. I don't think they've missed a thing in in three or four years. But that is quite a sacrifice to do all that. So what's that mean to you? And do you actually notice it? I remember a lot of times I didn't even notice that my folks were there. But then you notice if they're not there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just comment a little bit on, on the sacrifice your folks make. Well, first, I'm just super grateful that um, it doesn't matter where I'm competing. I know they're going to be there. And I know how much they have invested in me in the sport. And uh, I can always count on them to be in my corner and support me through the highs, the lows, and everything. And um, I see my dad watch Southern Scuffle, drive to Indiana to watch my brother Logan, and then made it back for Sunday for Jack all in just one weekend so it's not just like it's me it's kind of how my dad runs his family he's going to be there for all of us no matter where we're at and how how far away he is do they ever just tell you okay we're taking this weekend off going to watch it on flow and you're on your own i don't know i i really think my dad just loves it so much that i don't think he'd miss anything and then you can you can kind of feel that presence too can't you in the gym when you're wrestling Oh, yeah, I can always hear him, move your feet, Max, move your feet. It's good advice. It's really good advice. So you talked about your older brother, Logan. He started out at Iowa, now uh, finished up at Warburg. I think he's a senior, isn't he, this year? Yep. I think he got second in the country last year, Division Three. And you've got a little brother, Jack. He's a sophomore, I believe, at LaPorte City Union. Got seventh last year, and actually, I remember watching him. I think he was pretty beat up, and he gutted out some matches there. He was hurt pretty bad. Talk about the kind of relationship you have with older brother and younger brother and just kind of how you obviously bonded through wrestling. Mm-hmm. Just uh, me and Logan, really competitive, always growing up, just um, trying to almost stair-step each other and who was going to do better. And um, I'm just really glad that when he was a freshman, he got uh runner-up at state, and I was like, I can do it too then. You know, because that, like, that right there just – made me know that if my brother's doing it, I can do it too. And uh, I'm just grateful for how much he's pushed me. And now that we're older, how much closer we are. And um, he inspires me because I see how hard, how hard he works. And um, I love them both. And my little brother, Jack, he probably got a little more love, a little less hate than Logan did. But <laughs> he's kind of on the rise, and it's kind of exciting to watch him and his career develop. Now my guess is – you know, I don't know your folks that well. But my guess is he's little baby brother, right? Yeah. A little bit after everybody. He's 
probably getting things a little bit easier, handed to him a little more, <laughs> maybe a little bit more. Is that probably true? <laughs> oh, for sure. My dad's definitely a lot easier on him, but um, it's not that much easier. I mean, my dad's still on Jack pretty hard and making him get up for morning cardio and yeah. the whole nine yards. So we talked about all the travel your folks did, and obviously the the team was doing that travel too. Are you still? Do you still look forward to like going on trips and going to different places? You know, I talked to Coach Swab about this last night. Is it purely a business trip? Do you get any enjoyment out of it, or is it just kind of a grind, just the travel? Because the, the travel can grind you down. There is a big grind aspect, but um, we have, I know we have a lot of fun. Just you know, you're because we're wrestling, but we're hanging out with our best friends, and we're going around and we're eating at places like mom and pop shops and northern new york that you know you'd never get a chance to go to or uh just playing games in the airport kind of making fools of ourselves and just kind of enjoying each other's company and just getting to see new parts of the state that without wrestling maybe we wouldn't be able to see it's so like you've been out to new york city do you think you went to some places that you probably wouldn't have went to just because of wrestling yeah i'd say new york city when i went and watched nationals as a freshman um, I mean, I'm sure there's other some big cities, but it's kind of I think it's a great opportunity to get get around the whole U- U.S. and see big cities, see small towns, and just see basically everything. I want to talk a little bit about your your warm up and your kind of your pre match routine. And I'll preface this by saying I I think you do it probably as good as I've seen a lot of college guys do it. Where I think if I walked away. Max, you're up in an hour or two hours. You're going to get yourself mentally and physically prepared and go through your routine. Like high school guys, it's just it's a nightmare getting those guys ready. You know, and I remember Kyle Anson, who wrestled at UNI and wrestled for me at City High, that, that, he was a guy that could do that. You didn't have to worry about him. So let's go back. So let's say it's a home duel and it's a 7 o'clock duel. Go back and give us your routine. You can start from any point of the day you know, up to the making weight and then your warm-up and, and what gets you ready to compete? I'll start with just uh, got to make sure you get a good breakfast in because those are the calories that you'll be running on when the meat comes. Um, I think kind of sometimes people, they try to starve down the weight. But I like to stay uh, three, three and a half pounds over before weigh-ins to kind of get a good warm-up as I'm making weight. Right. And then make weight, eat some fruit, try not to overeat, you know, put back in some water and stuff. And then for me, it's kind of stay as relaxed as I can, but get that heart heart rate up one more time before I step on the mat. And then for the, I wouldn't even call it a weight cut, I call it weight manage, but you're you're somewhere in that two to three pounds. Your good warm-up is getting you down to weight. Yep. And then you're weighing in, replenishing a little bit. And then you just need to spike it again, or do you, do you need to do a whole nother pretty much war, uh, warm-up? It's just a quick sp- uh, spike, maybe three or four takedowns or three or four sprints. You're listening to 1650 The Fan with Max Thompson, 2017 All-American for you and I. Here's a question that uh, I never think about this. Somebody asked me to ask you this. Do you still get nervous before matches? And is there different levels of nervousness? I'd say the nerves are always there. Uh, It doesn't matter who you're wrestling. It's just kind of the... Um, an aspect of the sport of wrestling when when it's just you and another guy because you know that you're not going to be able to push off any of the the loss or the win on any on anybody else so you know that you're out there alone so you just got to kind of try to own it is it still is, is there any difference between wrestling a number two ranked guy and wrestling a guy in nervousness uh, i mean it depends how you look at it but I think uh, nerves, they kind of jump around because, like, if you're getting ready for that NCAA semifinals, you try to look at it as just that match. But, you know, then you start thinking of some implications and stuff. But really all, all I'm going to say is the nerves are always there, and right. it's always going to be something that you got to deal with and keep under control. Talk a little bit about last year, not this year, but last year's Southern Scuffle where you – I think you kind of opened some people's eyes, not so much here in the Cedar Valley, but – you knock off Lugo from Edinburgh, Gardner from Lehigh, uh, also a Drexel guy that's ranked, and I believe you end up getting third there. Do you think that catapulted you toward 
conference and NCAA? Or is that just, hey, that's just the next guy i got to beat on my way to being All-American or national champion? I think I was thinking just the next guy and the next opportunity, and I think I did a good job of just kind of taking on whatever was in front of me and staying in the moment and staying in the present. So you had three or four matches with Mays from Missouri last year, and all those matches were great matches. I know you came out on the short end, I think, on three of them. The other one was you just about majored him. But those two of those matches came down to – I mean, they all came down to, I think, buzzer beaters, didn't they? Where if it's a half a second later, you beat him two more times and actually put you in the national finals. You know, the, the thing I thought that was kind of cool there was – especially at the conference tournament here in Cedar Falls, there was that long wait to see if you'd won that match or not, or maybe it was going to go overtime. And you guys were kind of talking. Wasn't he raising your hand and stuff like that? Did, did you guys ever talk after that and and mutual respect-wise and hammer things out, or was it just, hey, that's the way it went? Yeah, I think we have a ton of respect for each other. And um, he'd, you know, give me some advice or say, keep keep your head up. And, and that's not really what I wanted to hear after you beat me, but I'm glad that, Looking back at it, uh, you know, I respect him, and I'm glad he was that good of a uh, character or whatever. So there's no doubt you're a leader on, on the team at UNI. Who's maybe the one or two other guys that, you know, you look to that are, are leaders? And maybe you just want to talk to us and you go, hey, you know, I, I'm looking for advice or I'm looking for your opinion. Who's those one or two guys you look to? I always look to Josh Alber just because I see how calm and confident he is and especially how he's competing right now. How uh, when I watch him, I can see in his eyes that he, how he believes in himself, and it makes me want to believe in myself. So you've had not quite a year since last year's national term, and this is kind of an unfair question because you're right in the middle of a your sophomore year. But have you had time to realize how great of an accomplishment that was, placing last year as a freshman for you and I? Yeah, I'm super grateful that I had that opportunity, and uh, I'm just excited for you know, my next big opportunity, and I'm just going to keep trying to live in the present and take it all head on. So this year you've got four losses to three different guys, all, I believe, by an identical score of three to two. So does that – What? Do, first of all, what's that What's that mean to you? I know that it upsets you, makes you mad, but it's all three to two. That kind of starts telling me something, but I want to get your opinion on it. Yeah, there's got to be more offense and – I got to get to where I'm good when I'm getting to attacks because that's when I'm the best. Um, when I'm getting to someone's legs, and you know, I got to learn how to adapt to when somebody's slowing me down or they're throwing me ties that are kind of frustrating me, or maybe I'm squeezing too much. But uh, it's probably a little bit of all that. But just kind of once again going back to living in the present and staying to my stuff and getting to my attacks. Talk real briefly about how much of an honor that was at the wrestling that all star meet. I'm super grateful, just especially to go down with Drew, you know, one of my teammates, and getting to wrestle in a cool atmosphere and uh, be around a lot of wrestling fans and also wrestle on a dual team with a lot of other great NCAA wrestlers this year. Well, thanks, Max. Appreciate you taking the time today, and we'll be back on the mat with head coach Doug Schwab. When all you want is sports, all you need is 1650 The Fan. Welcome back to On the Mat. Second guest, head coach of University of Northern Iowa, Doug Schwab. I think it's Douglas Lee Schwab, isn't it? Your middle name, nope. Lee? No. Alan? Nope. I'm going to try one more. Douglas Merle Schwab. Merle. <laughs> uh, William. Douglas William. Is it really? Yeah, it's William. Okay, so it's Mark, Mark Lee, Mark Mark Lee Schwab. Lee, yeah. my, dad, my dad's middle name was Lee, too. See, I thought it was a Lee thing, so. All right. Well, welcome, Coach. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let's start off first. Let's uh, let's get an update on those twin girls, little baby girls. Six or seven months old now, aren't they? Eight months old. Oh, my. Eight months old. They got two teeth coming in. They're rolling over. They're starting to get, they're, they're crawling backwards. Not forwards yet. The one, Jenna's doing like kind of a swim. She's doing like a swim move forward. Yeah. But they're, they're but not they're, moving forward. Yeah, a little bit. Because don't they do that kind of rocking yeah, thing? Yeah, like they rock. To, they kind yeah, of rock. Yeah. But they. But she's starting to kind of swim, move. So a little bit of their part of her defense they're working on already. So it's good. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're doing. They're doing well. Well, that's good. No, 
Hey, can you give us an update real quick? Joey Laser went out to Colorado Springs, the OTC Olympic Training Center. Yeah, they had a they had a training camp out there um, for five six days. I mean, they had a longer one, but the if they weren't if you weren't a, a world team or a, a top three guy, you couldn't come to it. So he got to go the last five days of it. But just any time those guys can get, he can get an opportunity to be around some of the best guys in the in the country, and then bring things back to us too. Um, but we got to keep getting him out there. It was I know it was good for him. Um, I know he brought he brought some. He started talking about some technique things that 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 he saw some positions and I don't know. I just we we want to stay as current as possible and we want to give guys like him and that's part of what you know the the Panther Wrestling Club with the RTC. We want to we want to be able to keep guys current. We want to be able to keep guys going to those events. We want to be able to get him to go to to Cuba and in go to an overseas event which he's going to go to. You know, I mean, so those type of things that are that are coming in front. Um, you know, guys like him are important. And we're just going to continue to grow that grow that club you know uh, max talked a little bit before about some of the aspirations he has beyond so i mean those club guys are critical to, to us still continue to move our program forward but him going getting to go out to the training center is always uh it's great for him it's great for the program and we're going to keep sending him out to everything that we can so what is the criteria to go out there is it purely you have to get invited what if you want to go and live in the dorm out there and just train for six months does he have to uh, apply how, how does that actually work yeah i mean obviously I don't know how that would work with someone just kind of coming out of nowhere. I mean, they do have they do have a resident program. It's changed a little bit since since I was going through. But um, you know, a lot of guys are they're in regional training centers now. I mean, they go out and they they do some training camps out there. Right. Guys come together. But uh, I think that that the model that's going on right now is obviously working pretty well. They won the first world title since '95. You know, so there there's some some good things happening within. I think within the club structure, within USA Wrestling, um, that are giving these guys more opportunities just to be able to train and train at a really high level and, you know, be World Olympic champions. You know, I mean, I think that's kind of the the model. The model's pretty good right now. Guys are getting taken care of and they're being able to train full time. Um, I don't know the exact, you know, I, I just had to, had to message Joe Russell. Joe Russell um, does that stuff, you know, for guys on campus and said, hey, you know, wants to come to camp. So we got him out there to camp. So what's Joey Laser's schedule now this spring? I know he's going to compete a few times leading up to the yep. you know, trial. So go to a Q, uh, tournament in Cuba. Go to, to they, they move the AC back, um, so he'll go out to New York. He'll wrestle there and there, and then and then he'll he'll go to Open, and then you know, they got a kind of new trial structure that they're that they're going to do. Um, but got to qualify. He's got to qualify for you know for the trials and those things. But um, for him, just kind of be able to find the balance of his style, his style, and making it that transition into into freestyle. You know, I mean, because and he 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 gets in some some strange positions. He wrestles through things really well, but got to be able to create a little bit of offense. And and really, the matches he's got to give himself a few more opportunities. I mean, when I think when you sit and watch him, and you watch him with him, and you know, you talk to him, he's like, man, you know, I guess I look at it, I'm not really giving myself a whole lot of opportunities. Right. So he's got to be able to put himself in those positions more because he can score points from a lot of places. He's gotten stronger. He's done that. Um, you know, with new the weigh-in structure, he's he's moved up a, a weight class. But, you know, when you do things, if you do things well, then it can be a benefit to you. Um, but, you know, we'll get him back out there. I think the more that he competes, the more opportunities that he gets, the better he's going to get, and the more he's going to figure out really his kind of his style that's going to work for, for, you know, that level. You know, talk about the older guys, Blaze Cobble was back. It was last week for three or four days. Came mm-hmm. in the room a couple of days, worked with the guys. You know, he's down at Fresno yep. training. Do you get, you know, you know, with him and Joe Cologne, do you get some sense of, but especially with Blaze came back, he's grown quite a, quite a bit as a young man. Oh, do, you, yeah. do you get a lot of sense of pride knowing that you had a little bit to do with that and now he's he's out uh, well, that's, flourishing? I mean, that's what you hope you do with your program. You hope you're raising men. You know, I mean, that's kind of what we talk about doing is that we set them on a path that's going to, we help set them on a path that's going to help them continue to grow. You know, they're going to take the things that we talked about on a daily basis. They're going to take them and, you know, like start, start, start growing as men, not just, not just better wrestlers. But I mean, that's part of, sometimes that's part of the process, man. We can talk about it and we can talk about it. And, and sometimes you, you know, as a coach, you want a guy to be there three years before that. But unfortunately, sometimes they have to actually go through it. They have to, they have to live it themselves. You know, I think we, you know, we talk about that. Is there any yeah. way that we can do that? And I don't know if you want to yeah. cheat that process because then it really sticks for a guy. Um, but I mean, there's a, there's an immense amount of pride, obviously that we have in anybody that, 
has been in our program that goes out and is involved in another program and because there's still a piece of you and I in that though. I mean they sure they spent they five yeah. years or six years yeah. or two years or whatever they spent here. I mean they're going out and in some of the influence them the things that they are that, that are in their head, some of that that's that comes from, from this program. So man I man, I can't wait till we have guys all out spread out throughout the country, you know, and, and they're they're doing their best to get guys to love the sport and get them to to really I guess get something sometimes beyond getting your hand raised, you know, I mean, just, I don't know. That's, that's, that's what I hope for, man. Nothing. And I've said it before. Nothing can ever change. Blaze put, you know, almost six years into our program. Nothing can change that, you know? So, man, I, I hope, I hope for the best. I, I want him to whoop a bunch of tail this year and make a world team and, and then, you know, keep building beyond that. Yeah. And I talked to him and he's, he's really appreciative of what you and I did for him and the coaching staff. So, so I mean, it's a two way street. Yeah. You know, you're proud to see him succeed. I, I don't care where he's at. Succeed. No. Go out well, you and spread your wings. You don't want guys to be bitter about their experience. And and I think if you if you treat people the right way, and that doesn't mean that you're not hard on guys. That doesn't mean that you you don't hold them accountable. They're a high standard. But man, you got to you got to you treat them right, and you care about them. Guys will will come back and still love the program and not be like, man, I could care less about this program. I hope they I hope it burns to the ground. You know. Um, but I think that's just how we how we go about trying to raise men and and set them on a better path for the rest of their life. And you do that, man. The guys are going to keep coming back, and they're going to keep they're going to keep talking about the program. That man, that was a great program, and it helped make me. You know, some of this like some of the time, some of the people that went through with Pat. You know, I mean, that's what they those guys talk about. That man, yeah. this this helped made me. This yeah. this time made me. And they have friends for life, and that's what we want to have through you know the program that's going on right now. So I know I'm getting long winded on that, but. And our our alums are a critical, absolutely critical piece to continuing to raise the level of our program. I mean, we wouldn't have a lot of things that we have right now with our program that, you know, if we've got to be able to get our room expanded or whatever. Some things that we've been able to do have been because, man, alums that sacrifice for the program and now they're giving back to the program so that's what we want our guys to to go do and yeah, max talked about it you know i want to be able to i want to make enough so i can i can put you and i wrestling in a better place you know and that's that's a great thing to hear that guys um believe in the program that much you know let's talk about the young guys so redshirt freshmen some freshmen um you know they've had a couple competitions yep. too they don't get near the publicity or the pub yep. so i want to talk about them the rest of this first uh First segment, then we'll hit the varsity real hard and some results the second segment. But let's – young guys were at the uh, uh, Wisconsin Parkside Open, Flash Flanagan over in Dubuque. You and I. And you and I. Well, now yep. we're going way back, which I thought we, – we've already talked about you and I with, like, Brett yep. Robbins, I think, a month yep. ago or so ago. But you can – if you remember some things from that, go ahead. But I'll just – I'm going to throw out every guy's name at some okay. point. Um, let's start with the smallest guy in the team, Skipper. Sh- yeah, I mean, just – he just got to get bigger and stronger, you know. I mean, it's a, it's a huge, it's a huge jump for everybody. Um, but you know, when you're kind of rolling around about 125, yeah. <laughs> you know, so he and, and he's doing some really good things. I mean, you see him hit some incredible attacks, right. but just guys, guys horse him in some positions. You know, he's got to be able to wrestle through things a little bit more, and and probably gonna have to use angles a little bit more, other than just trying to use horsepower. Or we got to get him bigger and stronger. But um, I think he's doing a good job in the room, man. He's always he's always trying to get extra help. I mean, he's one of the, I'd say one of the guys in that group that is always trying to ask and help, trying to get better, trying to get with a coach. You know, so you do that, you know you're going to make an improvement. Um, you know, Skid Larzik made the finals of that tournament, got beat by, uh, you know, the kid from Iowa State that actually had a pretty good weekend this weekend, um, beat some ranked guys. Uh, but he's a hammer on top. And he won the Parkside tournament. Yeah, he won the Parkside you know, tournament, you know. before that. And he's doing, doing a really good job on top. Um just gonna have to get out of his comfort zone a little bit more you know in situations and he's very controlled wrestler and you can be a controlled wrestler but if the control goes away you have to be able to adjust to that too and sometimes that's going to happen i mean you're gonna have a guy that's going to raise his level or he's going to do some things and you have to be able to respond to that um the thing is i know i know that i know that he'll do it he just sometimes guys aren't sure what it really is going to take you know, and we got to help him understand this is what it, this is what it's going to take. But he'll do the work. Um, very skilled wrestler, very good on top, scoring a lot of points there. Yeah, he's um, dangerous in a lot of positions. Yep. Um, two, you know, two on one, he can throw. He's he's yeah. he's he's very good at a lot of spots. You know, can scramble. He, he's 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 really good everywhere. Just for him too, 
if he's going to be a 33 pounder, you got to he's got to get he's got to get bigger and stronger. Like that's, just, that's what I was not, say. not I mean, a ton of horsepower right now. I think he got recruited as a 25 pounder, yeah. and in July when I saw him or June the first time, he was definitely a 25 pounder. Yeah. I think he's grown a little bit. He's obviously uh, filled out a little bit. Yeah. He, he's a 33 pounder. Yeah, he's, he's long. You know, he's got he's he's a little bit longer, but that's something too where you just got to mature into. You're an 18 year old kid, you know, and you're still maturing. So he's still got some maturing to do. But I, I like how he competes, man. You know, he he, he does a good job. Uh, Hochlog, excited to have him back. Um, he broke his collarbone at Iowa State, and even Max can even tell you. I know Max was excited that that he's back because he's the kind of guy that he won't give you anything easy. He'll keep fighting through things. And sometimes guys, you know, they're used to getting their they get their s kicked a little bit, and then they tuck their head where he doesn't do that. Like he gets, he gets a kick, but he keeps coming. Yeah. And that's what makes a guy better. Cause you know, if guy just falls over and that doesn't happen in real matches and that's sometimes where we struggle, like, cause we expect a guy to fall over cause we got to this position, but he doesn't do that. Does he? I mean, he keeps battling through everything and, and glad that he's healthy. Um, he's back in the room. Uh, he's, he's recovered. I know that, you know, it, it can be sore in some spots, but Man, he is a tough, hard-nosed kid that well, I know we're really happy to have him back in the room. And so he's literally wrestled two collegiate matches now, right? Two or three yeah, tops? Yeah, a couple. Yeah, a couple. So what's, do you have any schedule for him to try to get a few more matches? Yeah, there's, a, there's still a few more events. You know, next week there's another, there's another tournament over in Dubuque. Um, a few guys have talked to me about wrestling on that. There's another one in Wisconsin the week after. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of our guys were concentrating now on just getting better. Yeah. get bigger, get stronger, help help make the team better right now. You know, so that's that's where a lot of their focus is kind of turned to because sometimes when you know, to really get stronger, that's it's it's time. Yeah. Like they can't we can't all of a sudden just two weeks of lifting now now you're now you got that horsepower like it's right. it, it's a spring, summer, fall type thing sure. to really get some of these guys to to get to that level. Uh, but there are a couple guys that still need some matches. Oh, absolutely. Don't you think? Absolutely. Yeah, and 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 we'll we'll get those guys and if if we if we don't get them this this uh you know this winter then you know we get them some spring, you get them to some freestyle events. You know any time that we can get them out there and compete, it's it's a good thing. A guy like Lara um ton of ton of ton of ability. Um uh, got to get to more offense. I mean, I think that's going to be the big thing for him. He's got to be able to create his own. He's got to be able to create his own offense and in in that's sometimes the jump to the next level too. You have to be you have to be able to do that. I almost see him in that comfort zone that he's such a good defensive wrestler that he can hang out, try to score off your shots, and he he needs he needs to have something. To and, and he has some good offense. He just you you the practice room, and I tell you, practice room habits and in some something that you know he, even Max practice room habits they come out like things that you do on a daily basis, good or bad. They they get they come out, and that's something where he's going to have to push more in, in the room. To be able to do that to get himself to more offense because he is good. He's there's no doubt he can he can scramble well. But man, there's certain times where the scramble gets taken away too. I mean, guys are good. They're good at scoring points. Sure. They're yeah. good at keeping something locked out, and then all of a sudden they take the scramble away, and then you're still you're step behind him instead of we want to keep him a step ahead. If if he's if he's kind of initiating those things, then his scramble would be better too. Um, but like what what he's like the potential though. I mean, I I know that he can he can wrestle and he can scrap at a high level. Keaton. Um, Keaton's just got to talk himself into things. You know, I mean, B-Rob was over at, at at that event, and that morning, you know, he's struggling to make weight. And almost like, I don't know if I am I don't know if I can make it. I don't know if I can. And seven hours later, he's winning the dang tournament. You know, so, I mean, that just, if that tells you that, and I talked to him about it, I said that it just tells me you just got to make up your mind on certain things. Like, you're trying to find a way out of this thing instead of find your way in. And he's like, he kind of told me, like, well, you know, I made weight, and I'm like, I'm, I'm going to win this tournament. And, and how he did it, too. You know, he got behind. He hasn't come back from matches a whole bunch. Right. You know, I mean, a lot of matches, if, if he either is kicking the guy's tail or the guy kind of takes it to him a little bit, there hasn't been a whole lot of back and forth and, and you know, got a late got a late point to tie it and then got to take down an overtime against a kid that was a D2 All-American that, you know, that had, had, had beat a few, a few of our other guys, you know, and beat some good guys in that tournament. So, you know, it's good for him to get a win, win his first tournament. But um, just, man, he's explosive. He just got to talk himself into things. Um who else we got there? Pat Schoenfelter. Schoenfelter. Schoenfelter's, whew, man, he's explosive, strong. Um, got to get him, you know, control some of those emotions. That's kind of a big thing. You know right. I mean? The, the wheels spin real real fast. But get him probably as basic as possible. 
because he's incredibly explosive and strong, very athletic, um, still figuring, still figuring some of those things out, you know, that jump to the next level. But man, the, the potentials there though, holy cow. I mean, some of the things I see him doing, you're just like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> wow, well, this guy, did he, he just did that? Like in the Max has felt him, he's, he's strong, explosive. He'll blow you off your feet once, but why don't want him to know that he can do it again though and then he can do it again and then he can do it again he doesn't have to just be able to do it once and that's something we'll continue to build carter carter's needs to get to the his best possible weight you know what i mean i mean i think he hasn't he hasn't wrestled 65 this year but i mean if you can tell me i think that some of those positions he just guys are bigger and stronger than him you know he's not, 74 yeah, and then he close. gets he gets yeah. underneath the guy because he'll come out and he'll score on guys a lot but then we got one. We got to get off bottom, or we got to get bigger and stronger till we so we wrestle the weight class that we're, you know, that, that's going to give us the best chance. Um, Yant Yant's a competitor. You know, he sometimes maybe doesn't doesn't look great, but man, he competes his tail off. He fights for everything. He find you know he really finds ways to win, and really he's grown into his body. I mean, that dude has gotten. I mean, how much taller has he got since he got to school? Yeah, I mean, he is he's, he's filling out. Yeah. He is growing right now, and and sometimes when you're doing that, you got to figure out how to control your body. You know how to. I mean, you're making adjustments. I don't know. I haven't grown at all. I haven't grown for for thirty years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't even know what that what that feels like. But the thing is, is he's 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 getting better. Um, He's working out. He's growing into his body, but I like how he competes, man. And, and he's and he's a good guy. You know, he's good in the room too, man. I mean, he he keeps battling even though he gets his tail kicked. But I mean, he's wrestling with I mean, he's wrestling with Steyer and Lujan and Max and 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 I mean, he's wrestling with those guys every single day, man. He doesn't he does not cut a corner to anybody he wrestles. He wrestles the toughest guys, so that's going to serve him well, though. All right, coach. We'll be back uh, on the mat for third segment in just a moment. Log on and listen online at 1650thefan.com, the online home of 1650 The Fan. Welcome back to On the Mat, final third and final segment. Guest is still head coach, you and I wrestling, Doug Schwab. Can't get enough of me. Max Thompson stuck around. He's, he's sitting over in the corner, a cup of coffee. He's feeling good, getting ready for practice. He's taking here. notes, man. <laughs> he, he, he wants a donut from the Port City Bakery, doesn't he? That's what I heard. I'll try one of those. Okay, we got the. Uh, Speaking of donuts, man, Hy V. Have you ever had any donuts from Hy V? They had this. They got some specialty ones. Like there's a Heath one that I had, and I'm not a big donut like a fan. Heath but bar. Yeah, it's got some Heath bar crumbled on top. But well, I mean, some, yeah, it, I mean, it's, you're eating it's, cake. You're eating candy. I mean, it was pretty good. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you, like, I, I'm not a like donuts aren't my thing, but it was pretty good. I'm not a big donut guy either, but I like muffins. Yeah. And you know that's just an excuse to be eating cake at <laughs> breakfast. Really, it is. I mean, look at it, like a chocolate chip muffin. I'm eating cake. Yeah, but you yeah. feel good because you're eating a muffin. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, all right. Maybe I digress. Talk, a talk yourself bit. into that. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> banana nut muffin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, coach. Let's talk about uh, a couple big events we just got back from yep. uh, Hampton, Virginia. Yep. And a couple weeks ago, Chattanooga, the Southern Scuffle, which yep. is just a beast of a tournament. Um, finished real well in both. Uh, obviously, I think you think you could have done better, and I actually think we should, probably should have done a little better at, at some weights and and, uh, and in some duels. But let's start with a scuffle. Uh, get second place to Penn State. Um, yeah, beat a beat, beat a good Lehigh beat team. Beat a good Lehigh team. Lehigh's, you know, and they, and they were out a one eighty four pounder. Um, but still beat them by, you know, like 30-plus yeah, points, you know. Right. So um, good showing on our part. We put put multiple guys in the finals. You know, the thing with that that event, we went out to Vegas, and Vegas was such a deep tournament this year. It was incredibly deep. There's already 40 Division One teams, and, and this one wasn't as deep, which is fine. You know, some of those teams went to the South Beast duels. Yeah. So, you know, like a team like Missouri, Okie State happened to be over – in in Italy at that time, Minnesota, Cornell, um, some of those teams that would usually be there weren't there, which was okay because, I mean, for us, really, we wanted to go to see Penn State. I mean, that's the only only opportunity that we're going to get to see that team. We There was there were six national champions at that event. Right. I mean, that's what we wanted. We got to wrestle three of those guys. Um, so for me, thinking in my head, like, we that's why we're going down there. And we have a two-day event. We have kind of the, the a similar structure to the nationals like man we're going to be prepared for two-day events and that or two or you know a three-day event there's only one three-day event in the year but we're going to be prepared um 
through going through that. I mean, guys went through it multiple times, so there's going to be really no surprises. Uh, Schwarm, Schwarm pinned his way to the finals, um, got to wrestle the defending national champion in the finals, but, you know, learned a few things. Um, learned a few things as being able to create some positions. I mean, that guy was very sharp. I mean, I'll give him some credit, man. He hit some things, and it, he hit some unbelievable holds, and there was no scramble. It's just none. Like there, I, He's quick and he's clean. It was there was none. There was like no position was he gonna allow him to be able to create anything, and that's where, you know what? That's that's the jump he has to make. But Chorm Chorm, he's a very smart wrestler. He understands things. He internalizes it. He he he's gonna improve from that though. Um, being able to feel that guy. Uh, Thirty three. We had two guys wrestle. Um, both guys won a couple matches. Uh, Wagner Wagner's he's making he's making steady progress. I mean, he is. It's just, I mean, he, he's 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 continuing kind of to 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 make some jump. I mean, you see it happening. And obviously, it's not as, as as fast as he wants, but man, you're seeing progress. Um, you're seeing him be able to, to control his emotions better. You're seeing him being able to hit some attacks, and and you know, just we're working through some things. But man, he's going out there and he and he's competing his tail off every time. And you know, you can you can uh, appreciate that. Um, he's not where he wants to be, but he's going to continue to work to get there. Uh, Elber came back and got third. I think that's an absolutely that is that's a very important. Um, got beat in the semis, and I don't know if anyone. I just actually happened to see a video of that. Like the guy rethrew him really nice. I mean, you just got to give the guy credit. We're in deep on a shot. We come up to the body. It looks like he's almost gonna body lock him. It looks like they, he's going down. And then guy threw yeah. him through. You yeah. know, so so good on his part. The the thing I'll say about Josh, no matter what, he will go down firing. Like he doesn't, he he can lose three to two. He's gonna lose. He'll lose eight to two. You know, he'll try something at least. Right. At least he doesn't doesn't just just kind of man, eh, it, it's done. Um, but learn learn a valuable lesson. Just I think being able to pick up his hand fight a little bit a little bit sooner. Being able to beat a guy when they're beating him in position. But came back and got third. Had a couple tough matches. Um, wrestled, you know, really just bullied a guy for third and fourth. Ended up tech falling him. So you know, good finish there. I think that's important. Guys come back. You know, Max. Learning lessons, man. You know, you talk, talk about him, like, lost a lot of 3-2 matches. Well, he just got to give himself more opportunities. And he knows that, and we don't need to keep harping on it. But how do you give yourself more opportunities? Obviously, head position, be able to create a little bit more motion because guys are keeping him away. Um, but this weekend was certainly a, a big step, you know, back in the right in, in, in the right direction as far as what how he wants to compete. Um, I don't I, – I'm not too concerned about – Guys lose some matches throughout the year, man. That's that's learning. That's why we're going out there. We're going out there to practice, and we're going out there to figure out things how we can make that that jump to the next level. So um, I don't know. I'm not I'm not too concerned about it. Keep giving yourself more opportunities. Uh, Logan Ryan, like how he's competing, man. He competes hard. <laughs> he comes forward and he keeps attacking. Um, keeps attacking ties. Like get him to attack a few more offensive holds. To keep 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 his head up or get a guy underneath him a little bit more. Um, you know, Peyton, Peyton didn't have a good event. Sometimes that happens, you know, sitting and talking with him. He's got the right perspective though. He's, he's, he's figuring things out. Sometimes, like I said, things don't always come when you want them to. And that's, that's where that faith and belief in yourself and what you're doing and that what we're telling you is, is actually going to happen instead of, yeah, you know what? I don't know. And then turn the other way. Like, man, you never know how close you are to turn that corner. You just don't know. That's why you keep knocking and, and he's going to keep doing that. Um, 65 both those guys need to step up you know someone someone really needs to kind of take a hold and 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 decide who's going to be the guy there between Kelly and and Patton um guys have flashes of really good things i mean there's some things that are like oh, okay man that's that was really nice you just both guys need to have more of it and is I, that is that kind of the same thing at 33 and and yet it it oh i guess with uh with Ryan and and more yeah. those three weights yeah you know there's Peyton's a little dinged up right now, so I mean, I, you know, go go make it your weight. You know, I mean, that's what I would tell a guy: like, go go this weekend, go beat this guy, and then I maybe mean, just beat a top twelve guy. Like, what? I guess we, what are we gonna do? We probably got to put you, keep putting sure. you in there. You know, yeah. I mean, so it, that's what just guys got to thrust themselves forward and really make themselves the guy. Um, you know, you wish it was very more clear cut than it was, but right now, just nobody is. I mean, we split those matches last weekend and. There were some there were some good things in both guys, but you know what I mean. Someone's really got to step up. You know, we Bryce Steyer went down there, got second. 
Uh, beat a really good Marsteller in the semis. Real good. Um, wrestled the national champ, and I tell you what, there's somebody that's got maybe heavier hips than Bryce. <laughs> he hit him with a double, and then he just dropped his hips on him. It was like, whoa. Uh, is Bryce but, like, whoa, that's what, that's what it feels like when I do I don't know. I have to ask him, but, I mean, that you know, uh, but he could have easily and not went down there. I mean, he went down there on his own dime. He went down there, drove down there with his family. I mean, he could have just said, nah, you know what, eh. So he went down there, he competed, um, seeing some, some definite progress in him, and we just got to keep having him close to the team, keeping him grow, keep making the guys around him better, and, and get him so when he steps back on the mat next year, like, holy cow, man, that's, that guy is a different guy. Holy, you know, and that's, that's why we're doing what we're doing right now. That's why he's in that, that position. Uh, Lujan came back and got third. I think, you know, I think we talked about it. That's the first time he's got third in an event. You know, he's usually getting first in the event. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but even, even, you know, even from Vegas, it was a, it was a m- marked improvement getting himself back up and ready to wrestle. And I think that's, that's a critical because he wrestled the same kid, actually. He wrestled the kid from, from, uh, from Stanford in the same spot in the Constellation semifinals. He had a crazy scrap with him at, at Vegas where guy was to his legs and said, no, he came out and he scored. He put him down. He scored points. He scored points again. And that's, to me, that's progress. He's able to get himself back up and not just kind of dwell over what happened. I lost a match. Is that what it is, the disappointment of losing and then you just can't recover? Is that what is going on? A little bit, yeah. And then, you know, the wheels start start spinning a little bit. And and just things that instead of, I mean, the best thing that I can do right now is I get back on the horse. Because I tell you what, I guarantee it, it feels better going home third than it does sixth i mean there's without a question i mean you don't even have to think about that but also you can build momentum for the future and, and unfortunately there's gonna be times where you're in that backside and man your team needs you right i mean if we ever are going to win anything big i mean that's how we get you get second as a team we don't get second as a team if those guys don't come back and and and, and get get odd places i mean it just doesn't happen because the points get shut off um so that was good it was good to see that it was good to see him um really respond like that drew I think this is a foster, like Foster's at where I think everyone thought he would be at, you know, and sometimes some guys work into shape more. Some guys kind of build as the season goes and he's a guy that's going to build as the season goes, but he's in a good spot right now, man. He's, he scored a lot of bonus points this weekend, three out of four matches. He beat a rank guy. Um, you know, he got to wrestle a national champion. I think he felt some things in some positions where, okay, like this guy's good, but am I giving him too much credit? <laughs> Cause man, I'm really good too. Yeah. And I, that's to me. That's that was why we wanted to, why we want to put those guys in those situations so they can feel those guys and like, hey, he's, he's a he's a guy too. He weighs 184 pounds just like me. Oh, he weighs in. I mean, his, yeah, he's got really nice hair, but, yeah. <laughs> but, man, if I hit my tax, if I stay where I'm good, if I I can dictate things too. It doesn't have to be all on them. And I think that's where guys get beat a little bit is because they give the other guy all the credit, and they don't give themselves enough credit and. That's to me that, that that next step and really truly believing that you're one of the best guys. Like it's not even a thought. It's like I am, and that's how a lot of those guys step out there. Um, Hog did a great job. Got got to the finals match, um, kind of in the semis. Kind of found a way to win. We challenged a we challenged a call. They'd given a takedown. They called it off, and then he goes and gets a takedown in overtime. You know, being able to the the thing in in Hog is talked about his brother a little bit. Man, he he fights for everything. It doesn't matter. I mean, he, in the Chattanooga match, he's down like 8-2, reverses the guy, put him to his back in like the last eight seconds. And I really believe if the ref would have been ready for that, he would have called a pin because he was pinned. Right. Um, but he wrestles through everything. Um, Isley, there's there's some signs, man. The guy's he, he's, he's, he's coming back. He's hitting some really good attacks. Um, but again, just give yourself some more opportunities, man, and, and really trust and believe in him. You know, the duels... Went three, three and one. I think really did beat get, beat the teams we should beat. You know, um, Arizona State. You got to beat somebody that you're not supposed to in that situation. I mean, we have to, we have to, we have to beat a guy at 57 that's ranked ahead of us. We, you know, we got to beat, we got to beat a guy at 74 who's the number one ranked guy in the country. We got to beat the heavyweight. We got to beat, you know, we got to beat somebody like that to be able to win that duel. Um, you know, Max, Max did a great job. I don't care when. You beat a national champion. You beat a national champion. It's a big deal, you know. I mean, and a, and a guy that had beat him before, I think that that's that's those things are those things are huge. They're huge mental 
barriers to, to climb. And, Look at Max B is, and regardless, I know he won it three or four years ago. The guy's almost impossible to score on. And, and <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't so, give up much. You get, a, you get a score or two on him, you're good to go. But a lot of guys have been left in his wake that couldn't score on him. And, and the great thing about that match is, you know, the, the guy, he got away in two seconds, so he, had, he still had riding time. So he had to go get a score, and he went and got a score. And he gave himself an opportunity to do it. And that's, man, that's kind of what we talk about is going to make the difference for him. I think we had, we had one, uh, Josh went 4-0, Max went 4-0. Drew went four and zero. We had a couple other guys go three and one. I know Taylor went three and one. Hoshog went three and one. Isley went three and one. Um, and Logan went three and one. You know, a couple other guys went two and two. But you know, I think overall it was a it was a good event for us. Um, but it's you know it's time to really start to me putting an edge on. Um, it's time to start beating some guys in, on paper that we're not supposed to beat because that's how that's how you really that's how you really move up things. I know we just. Uh, the first, the first ranking should come out from a coach's poll here, um, so we'll kind of see where some guys are at. But for some of our guys to be able to put themselves to be a, a gold a gold standard or a silver standard guy to 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 get a spot, um, you know they're going to have to have some wins, beat some guys that are ranked, and really put themselves in in those rankings. I think we got guys six guys really solid right now, and and guys are getting better, but it's got to have have guys continue to step up and keep raising those ranks. Coach, got a little less than a minute here. Uh, South Dakota State's coming up this Sunday. Mm-hmm. And then later, uh, obviously, February 3rd, 10th, 17th, all Saturdays yep. consecutively, Oki State down there, Iowa State, Missouri at home. Yep. Let's just, since there's not much time, just highlight a little bit of that South Dakota State one. Uh, Brookings five hours away. So, I mean, it's a, it's a doable 2 o'clock on Sunday. I know that they, uh, they get good crowds. Um, they, they market well. They got a good team. They're going to compete hard. Obviously, we're looking forward to. I I think I know I love I love I love our environment, but I love going into someone else's environment and and hopefully be able to make them, you know, real quiet or be able to hear our fans. I mean, I think it's just it's just fun. It's fun to have a great great atmosphere. Um, and that's what we compete for. We compete to wrestle in those type of environments. So looking forward to competing on Sunday in Brookings, and it'll be a fun meet. Thank you, Coach. Everyone have a good night. You've been listening to On the Mat. The Cedar Valley's longest-running radio show devoted entirely to wrestling. Brought to you by Rolling Ford and the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum on 1650 The Fan. This show is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.